Hi, Ralph. You okay? Yeah, hello. Yeah, Hi. I'm sad news today, Ralph, about uh, Gerard Houllier. I understand that uh, when you were the RB Leipzig manager, he was doing some scouting for you. What are your memories of him and what tribute would you like to pay? Yeah, fantastic uh, um, football knowledge man. Uh, I think he he did a fantastic job in Leipzig, brought us really some really very good players. I uh, uh, learned him with, with Ralf Rangnick at the time when I was working there. And uh, really sad news that he is gone. What's the team news for Arsenal on Wednesday night after Sheffield United? Any fresh injury news and how are you going to get Nathan Redmond into the team after that goal? <laughs> um, yeah, so far, surprisingly, everybody uh, tells us that he's fit and wants to play again. Um, so it's, it's normal when a team is successful that nobody um, thinks he's then tired. We must have a look tomorrow. Um, so far, no injuries. Um, a few yeah, tight muscles, but uh, in, in, to be honest, uh, I cannot tell you to today how, how good they, they will feel tomorrow. We have tomorrow a light session, but um, yeah, until Wednesday, I think we know more and um, haven't decided now what, what, what options we have. And what about Nathan Redmond, uh, Ralph, after that uh, goal on Sunday? He's making quite a claim, isn't he, to be in the starting eleven again? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is what I expect from every guy who's, uh, who comes in and, and, and uh, gets the chance to play. I think we know that um, he already gives us a quality when he's coming from the bench. This is important, especially in the end of a game. Uh, we have on this 10 position um, four fantastic players and we can always uh, select uh, uh, what uh, the best option is for us. And I uh, think Theo did a good job. Did we scored again, so it's not easy to come in there. Uh, but we will have a look how fit the other guys are and then we can decide it. So Ralph, it's Arsenal next. And two years ago this week, Arsenal was your first win as Southampton manager. But uh, Southampton have never won in the Premier League at Arsenal. In fact, haven't won at Arsenal in the league until uh, 1987. It's 33 years ago. Can you break that run on Wednesday night? Uh, I only remember the last game when we've played there and we normally must win 3-4-1 and then we in the end draw it against them. So it would, could have been this win and he wouldn't have to ask me this question. But I don't give so much on stats, you know. it's. It doesn't have to do anything with the game tomorrow. We have a new team, they have a new team, a new manager. We are concentrating on a, on a very, very tough game against a strong side with, with good players. Uh, they uh, also played well yesterday, I think. Uh, they were definitely uh, able to win this game with so many chances they had. And we know that it's tough there. I don't need to have the stats that I know that it's tough to win there. But uh, yeah, we go there with everything, uh, with every positive experience we have made so far and then try to do to, 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 to the best. But they've lost their last four home games and you've been so good on the road since Project Restart. I mean, only losing at Crystal Palace. I mean, you must be playing with such confidence that you feel you can get something. Yeah, but you never uh take can take a stat for um telling you uh, how easy or how difficult it, it it will get so it's it's always difficult and um we never feel that we are in a in a even if you are above them in the table that uh we we are something like a like the favorite in this game no it's 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 a it's a good side um with a with a yeah also fantastic Game with the ball. What was, was missing a little bit in the last games was the scoring. So for us, it's to to be, yeah, again, on the highest level of our of our game. And otherwise, uh, yeah, we lost the last game against them at home 2-0 and uh, didn't score. So we we know how tough it is against Arteta and Arsenal, and we must be very careful tomorrow. Just finally, for me, it's a special match, of course, with Theo Walcott. So he spent 12 years at Arsenal. How much do you think he's looking forward to going back there on Wednesday? I don't know. Um, I know that he played there. This is also not an argument for me to say uh, he must immediately play there, even if he's maybe tired after the last game. Um, I think he played there since he was gone there for Everton, maybe once or more often. I don't know. 
Yes, maybe it's a special game for him. For me, this is not a, a part of what, what I, I, I take in my decisions, what I, what I decide on the number 10 position. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. OK, we'll go to Paul at Premier League. Hi, Ralph. Hope you're well. Yeah, um, thank you. Take you back to that game at the Emirates last year. How big a, how significant was that game, even though the result didn't go your way? I've heard it sort of referred to as a turning point. Was, it, was that the start of this journey that you've been on since? Yes, you can say that, definitely. It was an interesting game for us. And the first time we played in the shape we are still playing now, the moment where we throw all the other things overboard. It was the first game after international break and we changed everything. They were really expecting us playing a back five and then we came with the 4 2 2 and did a fantastic game, I think, there. Played really good. And yes, it was the start of, uh, I think since, since then we have yeah, taken a lot of points in the Premier League. And yeah, as you see, sometimes such games can, can give you a complete, complete turnaround. And yeah, this is the reason why you also must be careful of any opponent who is struggling because uh, they can also take such a game for, for, for a good turnaround. So be careful, be focused, do the best you can do for winning the game. We have played this time, this season, three times against uh, the top six teams uh, and uh, only took a point against Chelsea. And the other two games against uh, Tottenham and, and, and Man United, we were always winning. And then uh, a little bit too naive to, to to take all the points we could take maybe so we must learn from these games and uh, these next games are a good challenge for us against Arsenal and City to show ourselves that we can now also yeah, be um, winning until the last minute. And I know the system has been developing and improving game by game, week by week but from yesterday, looking at yesterday, how much better suited are you now to, to breaking down teams that, that sit back and come to St. Mary's to defend? Yeah, I mean, it looked a little bit easier yesterday as it was, I think. Uh, you must uh, have uh, the goal in the right moment. We did it right before the halftime. Um, what was definitely impressive was the first 20, 25 minutes because we, we played very disciplined, very uh, organized. Uh, with uh, always stressing them uh, with a lot of also good balls in behind, uh, good runs, uh, good combinations. They had only one chance in the first 30 minutes, I think. So it was, yeah, a very complete performance, I think. And um, this is what I told the players today also. Teams like uh, Sheffield, and they sit deep and they cannot cause us uh, problems in the future because we have learned to to find ways to play through deep defending teams. And uh, this was a big, a big topic in the, in the last months, how to do it. Because we knew that we, we are a good pressing team and when the team doesn't want to build up against us anymore and only plays long, then you don't get a lot of ball wins in the opposition half and then you need to have solutions with the ball. And I think we have shown now that we can also have this part of our game developed and this is important and uh, it was good to see and never, never never boring or, or, or slow. It was always intense, always stressing them, always trying to find a way through the lines or in behind. And this is how it should be with the ball. So do you go to Arsenal this week now with, with more weapons in this team than you've ever had? More, more um, systems and, and approaches than you've, you've had in the past, perhaps? Oh, I wouldn't say weapons, but more automatism, I think, and more behaviors that help us to, to, uh, yeah, to control the game sometimes. We want to be active, active with the ball, against the ball, we are always active. And, and I think uh, this doesn't even mean that we save energy. It's also an intense game. Yesterday, we also had massive sprints to do. And also with the ball, you have to move all the time. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's not really uh, stressing the opponent. But yes, I think we are a little bit further, but that is not uh, enough for, for winning against the top six team. Against the top six team, you want to win, you must also defend like a commit unit all the time, because otherwise they have so much quality when they're entering the box. Uh, you cannot avoid every chance. So they will have chances, but then you must at the end 
defend like Burnley did yesterday also on the line if it's necessary throw in every shot and and keep the clean sheet if it's possible good luck this week thank you thank you next talk we'll go to Adam Blackmore Radio Simon Ralph good afternoon good afternoon Adam um, do the wins over Brighton and Sheffield United allow you to go into these next two games and like you said against top six sides where you're not expected to win but do they allow you to go in there with pressure off does, does it help the players mentality that you've got those six points in the bag and can attack the Arsenal and Man City games without worry um, I think to, to find the right balance is the most important thing against these teams because we know about our quality now, we know that we can have self-confidence but the, the, the difference between self-confidence and a uh, little bit, uh, yeah, what is the word in English? Um, a little bit too much self-confidence, let me say it like this ends up in a, in a disaster when you and too 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 risky yeah but i mean uh, we have definitely learned to to manage the game well and this would be important tomorrow also you cannot only run against the ball and only hunt and only work against the ball you need to have also sometimes possession keep them away from your box and we learned to do this and we want to show this also against the teams like Man United. We did it good against Man United, but not long enough eh? and not um, clinical enough, I think. And this is why you need also a good uh, bench tomorrow, a good sub uh, tomorrow. This can help us in the end to get another quality on the pitch. So hopefully we are better prepared and uh, can do it over 90 minutes to stress them. To quote yourself a few weeks ago, a nice phrase you used was, you like being the pirates. And uh, many people, neutral, looking at Arsenal's form and yours, will actually say, possibly for the first time in a long, long time, you going there as favourites. Mm -hmm. um, is that part of the challenge for the team to, to deal with that, that they might be expected to get something at the top six side for a rare time? No, I don't think that anybody expected that we go there and uh, and dominate then or something. This nobody expect this. Uh, it would be stupid to think it. Um, I don't feel as a favorite to go to Arsenal. Uh, I mean, yeah. Now I can use the stats. Uh, we have never won there since I don't know 34 <laughs> years. It's perfect. Now I can use it. So nobody wants to be the favorite. But I, it's about favorite or not favorite. It's 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 not not really interesting for the game. I think the mentality must be that we are convinced about what we are doing, but find a good balance of uh, yeah, not forgetting about the basics, what has brought us to this situation that we are in now, that what has managed us to be there. And this is a very, very disciplined uh, football in all four parts of our game, or fifth, five parts of our game with the set pieces, which are also very important in the last games against uh, for, for us. What do you think of Arsenal? finally from me because obviously they're getting a lot of criticism you feel like Arteta's trying to go through an evolution and change what they're doing for the long term what, what do you think about them as a side yeah this is the 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 problem from all the managers and on, on the big six teams uh, winning is normal losing is a disaster and that means uh, you have a winner during the, uh, the week in the in the in the Euro League but it doesn't count because it's not the Premier League. So the count you know, the last two games in the Premier League. I know this. I had this also. And then finally you end up with four home games not win. Then they take the home home games, uh, what you haven't won. Uh, I only can see say what I have seen so far. And, and I've seen a game against Tottenham where they were playing really uh, around the box like, like, like handball and, and couldn't score. And yesterday it was nearly the same against the side you normally have to win. Yes, they had also the chances to win this game with a fantastic goalkeeper and and then a silly red card. It was a stupid situation, but the rest is is a team that has still a lot of qualities. Eh? I mean, you see the offensive players; every one can hurt you, and and you yeah, must pay attention for, for all the stress they have. But yeah, we go there with self-confidence, but not with self-confidence that makes us stupid, hopefully. Thank you for your time. Good luck. Okay, we'll go to Engin at Esport Turkey.
Engin, you just need to come off mute. There we go. Yeah, sorry. Hello, Ralph. Hello. Uh, in the last two weeks, Mikel Arteta has been putting a big emphasis on the crosses for the attacking efficiency. Mm -hmm. Southampton, as of now, is the side with the least open play crosses in the Premier League, but your team is quite efficient. How do you see crossing as a mean of attacking? And is there a strategy of Southampton attending so few open play crosses? Mm, I mean, it's an, it's an important tool to stress the opponent. Definitely, if you make crosses when you have entered the box with enough players, that can stress every opponent. This is um, a very good tool, I think, to, to, to be dangerous and to, to, to create some, some threats for the opponent. Um, maybe the reason why we are not so often crossing uh, in the game is that we have a different shape. Uh, we had, uh, we have the photo to do not really the, the the winger, the wide winger, who then maybe makes these crosses. Uh, that's the reason that we are maybe more more often coming to the center. But um, yeah, I think it's when you are when you're in the right situation and you wait for the right moment, then it is an absolutely good tool to 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 score. And um, it's it's about. Uh, the right moment to find when you cross. And then I think it's it's definitely good a good opportunity. Thank you. And the second one is the expected gold ranking. Southampton is really overperforming uh, in that set, which is like around nine goals more than the expected goal Southampton uh, would have scored. Do you expect these numbers to normalize a little bit during the season, or does this point out to the level of finishing? of the Southampton team, which means with such prolific strikers and a free kick masters like James Ward pros, this is an area where Saints would excel during the whole season. The first thing, you know, I don't give so much on stats. Um, um, last year, I can remember that we had exactly the opposite. We had uh, much uh, uh, more expected uh, or less expected goals that we had chances we had, so we didn't score so much. but. This season, I think it's different. Maybe because we score more often from the set pieces, so it's 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 an important part of our game now. When we are dominant and more around the box, I think when you have, all, have automatically more free kicks, more corners, and where we are very very successful in the last game, so it's good. <laughs> to be honest, um, we don't really take care so much about scoring yeah, because it comes automatically. We take more care about bringing the players in the position where we want them to be and what the rise is the, the the chances to 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 score maybe but but we don't concentrate exactly on on, on our behaviors in the in the in the box or yeah a little bit yes i would say it's a little bit not not the, the most important part what we are focusing on eh? it's more important to come there in these areas eh? than what happens there because it's a lot about individual quality you don't also don't want to give them too many advices because then they are a little bit blocked in their decision making so so we must be careful what you tell them to do there thank you thank you hi ralph hello i'm, I'm just in, interested to get your mindset when you go up against a manager who you know is going through a, a difficult time can you afford in any way to feel sorry for your opponent in those circumstances you mean the last game or this game yeah. this game okay no, well, I both, I suppose, in some ways. Mm. I mean, we, we are colleagues and we know uh, that in football everything is possible. And we also had, uh, not long ago, a, a situation like this. where I think the last game when I was going there was the same for situation for me. You can turn things around very quickly and they can also immediately turn in the other direction very quickly, normally. Uh, as nobody is... Um, yeah, safe that something can happen, but everybody knows this in this business, and then you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to, to, yeah, be, be uh, what did you say? What, what did you uh, sympathetic, sympathetic, sorry, sympathetic about him because everybody knows the, the, this is the this is the job we have to have. Yeah, it's a difficult job. We 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 go through these terms in every career of every manager. Some have it more often, some have it less, but uh, in the end, you must know what you have to do then. And uh, I think um, Michael is a, a young manager, but uh, an experienced uh, assistant coach from Pep. And I think he also saw there that it not, it's always not always successful. He had also some situations where it's not, maybe not perfect. And then uh, you must uh, turn things around. He can, 
should do it hopefully after Wednesday and then he can again find back the winning track. There, there was a, a tongue in cheek tweet from Alex McCarthy after the game saying that he enjoyed watching you because obviously he didn't have a save to make. Do you enjoy watching your team at this moment because you're someone who gets very involved in games on the sidelines? Do you get a chance to take a step back and appreciate the football that you're playing at the moment? During the game, not really, to be honest, because the, the pressure is so much on me. I see it when I see my face and I think, oh my God, you are really stressed at that moment. Uh, it's really scary sometimes when you see yourself standing outside there and can be maybe a little bit relaxed sometimes, I think. But no, you're so in the game and you're so concentrated and focused on what you want to coach from outside and then you don't really have a time to enjoy what, what, what they are playing. And, but after the game, when you see it again, then it's... And it's fantastic to watch because you see so many things you were demanding before in the in the game meeting, in the match plan meeting, and and then you you think oh, the guys are really listening, they really enjoy what we what we tell them, and we give them the right advices, the right messages, and then yeah, then you enjoy it, yes. But during the game, it's more stress. Yes. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, uh, Dan Rose at the Echo. Hi, Ralph. Hello. Um, I just wanted to touch on obviously the um. The depth of the squad that you've got at the minute with everyone back fit, and it's obviously a boost to everyone's back fit and, and available you've got now. Obviously, yesterday there was no Shane Long on the bench. Does that just show the amount of options and the amount of talent that you've got available at the moment? I mean, it's always good when a team is successful and uh, the first 11 looks better. And then automatically there are some players on the bench they normally want to play or should play. And then they don't step in immediately and that looks like the bench better. And then you have more options. When you look around and, and look behind you and you see, oh, no problem. I can also make now a sub in the 60 minutes because we have lots of quality outside. We have young lads like Mason Teller has scored four, four goals in the, in, the, in the second team on the weekend. I'm really happy when I see this because it's also young lads we, we want to force. And it's difficult in the moment to find a spot for everybody in the team. Uh, they deserve all to play. I think they all are working hard during the week. But I only can take 11 players, and that's how it should be. Everybody's pushing hard. Uh, the quality of the training is, is good. And that means that we are getting better. They cause us so much issues in the session sometimes uh, that with the ball, it's difficult, more difficult to play in a session than, than in a game. And, and, and this is something that definitely helps us to develop our game. That's right. You talk about young players there, but obviously Shane's probably on the flip side. I think he's 33. I think he's 34 next month. I mean... How much is he still champing at the bit to, to try and break into this team and compete with these young lads? Ooh, shame, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, there was a reason why we signed another contract with Shane because he is always a guy we can, uh, we can take and we can use as a sub or from the beginning. He gives everything for the team and for the club. And, uh, uh, and even if he's not playing or not in the squad, I mean, he's always positive and he always... Uh, tries to to uh, to support the others and this is for every player comes the moment when he gets older that he is more on the bench and I had the same situation I was playing until I was 37 years and I know that the last three four years I was more a sub but a, a good sub because I was always scoring and, and always positive and tried to push the team because I knew I have maybe power for 30 minutes for 40 I must say he's still very fit he can still play 90 minutes without a problem but even as a sub, I think he's important for our team. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Ralph. To Ben Stanfield. Hi, Ralph. Hello. Um, I know you were talking just there about expected goals and sort of Saints attack and threat in and around the penalty area. There was an interesting stat going around after the game yesterday that uh, in 2020, only three players in the Premier League have scored four or more goals from outside the box. And they're all Saints players, Stuart Armstrong, Danny Ings and James Ward-Prowse. I just wondered if that was something that you kind of encouraged the team to do, because I think I even remember Oriol having a shot with his left foot from about 25 yards yesterday um, to, to shoot when they get the opportunity, or whether it's just, you know, as you said earlier, everyone's keen to play at the moment, everyone's got that confidence. So is that sort of where the shooting's coming from? Uh, no, um, I think when, it's, when, when opponents are sitting a little bit deeper and the, the back five or back four is dropping very quick, then uh, you don't need to go in behind because then you have a good chance around the box also to score and you see there are so often deflected shots. I think Stewie, I think I remember the goal against Leicester away last season was also a deflected shot with the left foot and when you don't shoot then you can, can't score a goal so you have to and sometimes 
I don't like the shoots where you don't have any chance to score, but very often it's, it's, it's a half chance. And when you have a half chance to score and you shoot on the goal and it's a little bit deflected, it's tough for every, for every goalkeeper. And yes, then, then uh, maybe it's not a coincidence that we, we score more from, from outside the box than any other team. And we have with Browse definitely one of the, the best free kick uh, in, 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 the, in the league or maybe in the world. So it's, it's yeah. It's, uh, we don't have so that many free kicks for this uh, quality he has, to be honest. Uh, we, we, we don't have enough fouls around the box if you want, but we don't also not looking for this moment because we, we don't want to go down. We want to score from the game and, and, and we have good chances also in the last game to do it. But yeah, bring the players there more often. This is the key. And just um, the, the win against Sheffield United was your 16th win out of 30 games since 2020 started. You've obviously had lots of success for your career with clubs and things like that. I just wondered, heading into the Arsenal game, how the atmosphere in the squad compares with some of the other clubs that you've worked with over your career? Yeah, I mean, I know this situation. I, I mean, now with this team, you can feel it, the atmosphere, the positive belief. Um, but I must say that the interesting thing in this sport is that uh, when you go in the, in the dining room and see them moving around the salt and the pepper and speaking about the shape or something like that, uh, this is something new for me also. They are really focused on what, they, on what we're doing here. Very good mentality this squad in a moment. Uh, they enjoy it because I think we all went through a very difficult time together where it didn't work. We changed really the, the mentality now completely in the club. We don't want to be the relegating team anymore. And uh, this was our biggest goal to come away from this one time winning and then again falling back in old behaviors and uh, yeah, making us more than we are. We want to achieve more for what we invest and therefore we had to develop every part of our game. And because we did it together and because everybody or every player had a moment where he was sitting outside and watching, uh, they are no more, much more yeah, part of this group, I think, yeah, and more committed because they all have been once in the same situation, that we are out the team. So we have very good commitment now. And the, the squad is a good size, not too big. Everybody is important, important for the team. We tell them this, they know this, and they feel it hopefully also. And then it can grow something. And this situation where you have the feeling there's something growing, I spoke about that before the season. In this situation, I have been, yeah, nearly every time in, in every club I have been so far, yes. Thanks, Ralph. Good luck for Wednesday. Thanks, Ralph. Let's go to Dan Sheldon. Thank you, Jordan. Good afternoon, Ralph. I hope you're well. Um, we're obviously going to have a, a lot of fixtures coming up in quick succession now. I think there's four until the start of 2021 and then obviously Liverpool on the 2nd of January so that's five very quickly how much thought have you given to squad rotation yes uh, this is always difficult um, uh, I mean we have definitely few alternatives they are fresh and could maybe immediately also step in on Wednesday to find the right moment to do it is, is, is I think the, the crucial thing yeah? and as you said the next five games are all very tough coming up very shortly and um, this is um, a challenge for me as a manager for us all to find the right players to help us the players will never tell you that they are tired or something like that. so you have to take the decision and you know we have an intense way of playing football we showed also that we can play three games in or two games in, in four days or in three days uh, but now we have three days and three days. So this is maybe on the next Saturday then definitely a, a moment to, to bring something new or on Wednesday. I don't know. And you know, given the intensity your team plays at, you know, which positions, if you were to rotate, are you kind of highlighting that, you know, we need to freshen up here? Is it mainly the attacking end of the pitch? You know, the engine room with Prowse and Romeo or, you know, or the defence? Yeah. Especially these two guys, uh, I think they never need a rest. Uh, so. Although we have also a very good alternative with Eva there. But the attacking part is, is the most intense one. Normally they must sprint the most, they must cover long distances, uh, sprint distances moment, normally. So that it makes the most sense, I think, uh, to, to think about fresh players. Thank you, Rob. Good luck for Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Okay, we'll go to Damien at PA. Damien. Hi, sorry. Hi, Ralph. 
Hello. Hi. Um, Ralph, can I just ask, I think you're, you're 15 points ahead of where you were at the same stage last season. Firstly, could, could you have expected that? And are you having to reassess your, your targets for the season as a result? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I have not expected that. Definitely not. I, I haven't expected that we are again in the relegation battle this season, but that we are that high, uh, you can expect. So the threat of the Champions League spots, uh, we can we can stand this, yes. So it's <laughs> a different threat, you know. But uh, um, the second question was about your what targets. I, ah, I know, and oh, yes, thank you. And I also, don't change my targets. Um, they are not always based on on positions in the table. Normally, more on the game we want to play. And I want to see development. I want to see development every week. And where it ends up, I don't know, to be honest. Um, we we have now the battle against the big ones. I told you that we didn't take so many points this season against them. Last season, we took more against them. So let's find a good balance now from the way we play now to still be possible, be able to, 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 to yeah, take points against them. So this is the challenge now for the next two games. And then let's have a look. So the next five fixtures, just heard about the quality of the opponents we have. Let's go there. Sure. And can I just ask you, your, your attacking players have received a lot of praise in recent weeks, and rightly so, but how important has Oriol Romeo been to you, the way your team has played and how well you've done so far? Nice. And somebody asked me about him once because uh, he's uh, the, the engine, you said, uh, or he took in browser together, a couple in the centre. You as a manager always like to have, or want to have, because Absolutely unbelievable professional player with the ball getting better, getting fitter all the time. Is is the maybe best time of his career so far, I think. With Prowse together, they know each other very well. They are good friends and uh, they yeah, they give us a, a core of, of our game that is definitely very important for us, yes. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Okay, we'll go to Robert Hampshire Live. Hi Ralph, um, you, you spoke about earlier about Nathan Teller. Um, how impressed have you been? Obviously, the, the four goals sort of take the headlines on the, the weekend. But how impressed have you been in training with him? Um, yes, I mean, we didn't extend his contract because we are not convinced about him. So we are very convinced what he does here, and uh, we were a little bit thinking about what's the best position for him. It seems more and more that he's uh, feels more comfortable on the nine than on the ten. So let's push him there hard and. Get the better best out of him, and then yeah, I'm sure we will have a lot of fun with him. Okay, That's it. we'll go to okay. Darren Lewis. Hi, Ralph. Um, Hello. The first question is: a few managers have been saying this morning that football should be made exempt. From the coronavirus tears, I'm sure you'll all be aware of how it works. With um, the prospect of the fans being shut out, is this a case of maybe people's health being more important than football, or do you believe, do you agree that football should be made exempt from the restrictions? What what are we exempt from? What restrictions? So the restrictions are certain tiers that are brought in that prevent fans from being allowed to go to stadiums because the infection rates are rising across the country depending on where you live. Darren, just, Darren, just to clarify, are you, are you saying should we still, even if we're in tier three, should we still be allowed to have fans come in? Yeah, Frank Lamp has said this morning that football should be made exempt from the coronavirus tiers so that the fans are allowed to continue going to games, obviously socially distanced and with all of the required safety measures taken. Does Ralph agree? Um, my opinion is what means the supporters in the stadium that it is um, um, always 
difficult in such a strange time we are in in the moment and uh, uh, in Germany at the moment we, they have no fines at all and they are really struggling with the virus definitely have different uh, uh, stress now than we have it here in the moment but it's still also here the numbers are high as long as we have a situation like this I don't want to make the decision to be honest and to be responsible for how many player how many people I let somewhere the only thing I say is when I, see, when I look sometimes in shopping centers on the weekend or somewhere else, how many people are running there or through the cities in the streets before Christmas, uh, then you can maybe say, okay, but then it can also go in a football stadium. Uh, I can only say that I was very happy that they are back and I would like to have more back. And, uh, um, but if it is too risky and it's not on me to discuss or to decide how risky it is, then you shouldn't do it. And uh, the government has the full responsibility in this part of, of, of the politic and they must make the decisions. I do other decisions uh, also, but, not, but by far not so, so important like, like the decisions they have to take and I don't want to take it. And, and uh, I can live with everything. The more people are coming, uh, the better it is for us, no question. And it would be good if every team also in tier three maybe have a few supporters because when there are only 500 they can be very noisy and in their stadium with 80,000 or 60,000 500 or 1,000 are not really uh, a problem I think so for the risk factor I'm not the guy who must decide it I don't want to be the guy who must decide it so let's do them their job let's do us our job uh, and the second question will you attack Arsenal given their uh, Fragile confidence, their recent poor form. Sorry, I didn't understand you, you quite well. You, you, you got out a bit, Darren. Can you do that one again? The, 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 sure, of course. Will you attack Arsenal, given your confidence and the way that Burnley were able to win yesterday? Um, I mean, a game against Arsenal... I mean, you will not dominate them for 90 minutes if you think that you can do this and if they set back. So we expect them to be very aggressive like they have been yesterday also because um, they, they, they must win against us. And this is what you will see from the first moment on. So I expect the best possible team, very aggressive, hunting us, uh, being on the jump uh, and, and, and stressing us. So, I mean, everything else, uh, yeah would be surprising for me. And the last question, what can you take from Burnley's win at the Emirates yesterday? Um, I didn't understand. What can you learn? Can you learn anything? From oh, Burnley? yeah, I can learn that uh, such a game can, can easily have a different result because you saw the, all, the, all the chances they had and when you, when you look at the details from the Arsenal game, you see that they have played much better than the result was. So don't only look on the result, and you would not be, uh, yeah, happy. I think after the game. Thank you.